Hey there, freaks and sickos. Welcome to my campaign. For those of you who are not familiar, welcome back. And for everyone else, I really hope I've earned a subscribe at the end of this video. Especially given the fact that I'm running a very progressive campaign on a very shoestring budget. So if I win, it would really, really send a lot of necessary shockwaves to the American political establishment. If you're wondering what makes it progressive, I have plenty of other videos for that. For this one, though, I just want to have a little fun on a very unserious topic. I have a dirty little secret that a lot of people factor in when they're voting for somebody. See, I wasn't really born here, nor was I raised here. I moved to this place in my 20s, this Minnesota, but I've had family here and have gone back and forth to greater Minnesota, the Central Lakes area, for my whole life, at least once a year. I have lived in Minnesota since 2015 and in the metro since 2018, specifically Maple Grove, where I am running for city council this election cycle. I consider myself to be a lifelong computer scientist because, I mean, come on, my looks, my attitude, and my entire life story pretty much screams that. Another dirty secret that bothers me a lot is if I had learned how to computer from this place, the one I live now, the state, I would suck. Minnesota is a place that is always in the top 10 in education at the best of times. It's second in the worst of times. We're where we are right now. And, you know, COVID hit us, but it's not an excuse to not do better. But thankfully, there is a lot of work being done on teaching kids techno literacy. And I've heard, I don't know if this kid went to a mat, uh, this was when I worked retail. I'm not sure if this kid went to a magnet school or not, but there's there was a small kid and a dad. And he's like, oh, yeah, this kid is learning programming now. And that's great. Minnesota is doing exactly what NVIDIA does not want him to do. And that is awesome. I love to see it because programming is going to be even more important as time passes. And NVIDIA is lying to the public to defraud investors. That's the truth of the situation. That is how it is. Ask any computer scientist. Ask any furry in the field. And any furry outside of the field. Same opinion. I know there will come a day, perhaps within the next 10 years, that AI will truly be able to make complete skeleton code for applications. But you still are going to need to learn how to read it, how to riz it, how to put some meat on them bones. That is never going to be obsolete. People need to learn programming. I think everyone should make a sincere attempt at learning at least one language or doing that MIT thing. You know what? Let me look it up here. M I. MIT, not G, Programming Education 
guide interactive i know it exists hopefully search ng will help i don't want an actual class i want the interactive guide is this it please be it that is not it it was developed by MIT. There it is. Scratch. Thank you, Fire Sheet. So asking me where I'm from is a bit of a loaded question because I've lived in six different states, but I've spent most of my life in this swamp uh, on the East Coast called Savannah, Georgia. This is where most of my childhood was, more than half of it, 10 years to be exact. That one city, that one state. As of next year, I will have lived in Minnesota, the state longer than Savannah, but I can't say the same of the metro itself. And just like Georgia more than 20 years ago, the Republican Party, but in Minnesota, is whining, stomping their feet, and crying, acting like children, complete children, over what the state flag looks like. A flag they barely noticed and paid attention to to begin with until... It changed. They never loved the original design. It was always ugly. Very hard to look at. Very hard to take pride in. Very noisy as far as visuals go. Like, you can stare at it for hours, get lost in it, and still not figure out what it's trying to say until years later when you find out that what it's saying is not good. The Georgia flag was, and let's face it, this is a terrible compromise, still is, to slavery, what the Minnesota flag was to genocide. The reason Republicans love the old flag is because it glorified genocide. And they want to do that again. And to anyone out there defending Israel, including Dean Phillips, go ahead, leave your comment. It boosts engagement. But the fact is, I live in Minnesota, and no one really cares what you think. But you know what? Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe there is something more to this flag controversy than the desire to commit more genocide from the Republican Party. Maybe there is something a bit more substantial to the conversation than that. Let's have a look at the clip. Sound says nice. this issue cannot go straight to the ballot. The debate, the debate over the new state flag design is not over. Two Republican lawmakers say they yeah, want people, Minnesotans, to vote on the controversial design. However, the Minnesota Secretary of State says this issue cannot go straight to the ballot, and instead a constitutional amendment would be needed to change it. Not Here's Asma Murphy. This is the newly redesigned Minnesota state flag. A state commission spent months going over different proposals and gathering thousands of comments from the public before last month finally settling on this design featuring an eight-point star and an abstract outline Better than of the, the old state. One. Not everyone's in love with it. Flag shops are reporting flags with this old design are selling out. The Minnesota Republican Party Two is even babies. raising money by selling T-shirts with the old design that say, Save the flag and don't PC our flag. The latest blow, Republicans want the people of Minnesota to vote on the design. I already design. put the flag in now a Now the people PC. in Minnesota are saying, you know what, you have a product here, Legislative Commission, 
that we don't recognize ourselves as part of. And we're hearing that uh, again Young and hair. again. The old flag and seal share an outdated Florida. and for many offensive design of a Native American riding off into the sunset as a farmer plows his field in the foreground. The commission also designed a new state seal which features Based. a balloon and has been far less controversial. But Republicans want to vote on that one too. Governor Tim Walz was dismissive of any kind of move to undo what a state commission took months to decide. Why Republicans are going to be talking about this, I'm going to be building roads, bridges, and water treatment plants. Why Republicans are talking about this, I'm going to be making sure our kids are eating and we're creating job creation. So Any push to redo what this commission has chosen in terms of these new designs may be a tough sell in the Minnesota legislature. The Democrats still control both Obviously. the House and Senate. And while there are likely Democrats who don't like the new designs, it appears that the new designs do have a very powerful ally. A staffer tells us that the Speaker of the House, Melissa Hortman, has the new flag design on the door of her office. In Minneapolis, as May Murphy, WCCO News. Uh, late this afternoon, Speaker Hortman issued a statement and says, in part, we changed the flag for a reason. In addition to it being a poor design, it was offensive to a large number of people. There will not and the be state Senate votes to delay, reverse, or put the flag to a referendum. even more progressive than the last one. And if Kamala Harris wins, we'll have an even more progressive governor than the current one. Which is crazy, because the current one has been pretty damn progressive. So, the point of this video, really, is... A lot of Minnesotans see this as the DFL party flag. And it is uh, a revision... And the commission said they could do that. And people knew this upon entering it in. This is a revision of what was originally submitted. And I like it. It's simple and unique. So you have the K shape that looks like Minnesota. You have the eight pointed star. I don't. I still don't understand the cultural significance of it. You have an eight-pointed star on the flag and in the Capitol. So to change the flag back would be disrespecting the Capitol. But Republicans love to do that now. So no one cares what they think. And what makes this flag unique other than being the icon of the app launcher of the computer I'm running is the part on the right is something it is something you don't see in other flags you don't usually see sky blue covering up more than half of the flag like this and uh vexillologists will say, well, that's because you want it to be visible in the sky. But that's not really a problem. There's no chance that aircraft are going to be running into this, in fact, because of that blue sky, sky blue part of it. Because once they see the K, they're going to run around it even harder to, uh, you know, for low-flying aircraft. They're going to take even more space to uh, avoid it because they're going to have more anxiety knowing that part of the flag is invisible during the daytime. And at night, it is very visible because sky blue is not the sky the color is at night. Just as serious as their thirst and lust for genocide is the other reason and that's that the 2023 legislature, the one where the DFL took the trifecta, was what made this happen. So through that lens, I can see how that could be viewed as the DFL party flag. But there is one problem with that. Um... Republicans could have participated in the process at any point, but decided not to because they preferred the old flag that they didn't pay any attention to before any of this happened, 
because they learned the old flag glorifies genocide, and today's Republican Party loves genocide and is eager to commit it. And if you consider yourself to be a moderate, well, if you don't want to see yourself at the sharp end of a long knife, then just remember, you're the first to go on their list. But you can stop them. There is no working within the GOP to stop the madness anymore, and there never will be. They just have to be stopped. It's also one of those things, just like the border bill that they rejected at the federal level, that they decided not to participate in so that they could whine about not being a part of it. And I'm really sick of the whining and cowardice from Republicans on everything. We're not Georgia, okay? And putting up the old flag is just going to make you look more and more sad and pathetic over time, just like putting up the old flag in Georgia, the battle flag. I'm not going to show either of those old flags again. But I will throw a bit of a bone here, because I don't see this as the DFL party flag, just because they were responsible for changing it. The old flag didn't look good. As I as was already established earlier, and it's rather self-evident. So the process has already been went through. The money has already been spent in a state that can absolutely afford it. And the fact is, this is the state flag Minnesota now. From now until forever. Okay, this is going to be the flag of Minnesota. Whether you are progressive or conservative, here it is. This is it. And to the conservatives that feel left out, to everyone who is somehow still extremely upset that somehow, whether it's inheritance or retirement or both, have enough spare time to be deeply offended over that, I'm actually going to help you. I'm going to make a clear distinction between the state flag by making the official DFL party flag, if they're willing to accept it. And my other two progressive rivals for city council haven't done this. But you know what? I will. And when I'm done, I will encourage people to make prints and resell it. In fact, this very video is going to be in the Creative Commons anyway. So, there you go. I am going to start by going back to Wikipedia. My normal glasses are here, by the way. I'm really, really glad I can touch type. And doing a search for flag of Minnesota. The template's already there. All right, all right, here we go, here we go. Flag of Minnesota. So this is a modification, and what I really like about this flag, other than the 
unique color scheme and having sky blue on more than half of it is it just screams to the rest of the country, hey, I, I know the climate is changing, but the fact is we have water, though. And we have been taking this issue way more seriously than pretty much the entire rest of the country. By 2040, um, when you plug in your electric car, it's going to be renewable energy or nuclear. And Becker will shut down, and no one working at that plant is going to care because they've already negotiated their next steps anyway. Which is how it's supposed to be done. I think it's really cool that the commission did that. And here was the original entry. So this is what became what is now the state flag. And all six of these were on display at the Mall of America. I have the short. So, yeah, uh, this, way down here, is what eventually became this, the official state flag. But, with this, I can now make the DFL party flag with this original entry and have something distinct something that is just for the DFL while the current official state flag can be seen as for everyone and we will finally put this issue to rest and make everyone that continues to whine about it after this video is posted look even more sad and pathetic I call that a win-win. So I am going to copy the image itself. And over here in that corner, down there, I'm going to close the scanning app, which I just had up to balance this out. I really need to figure out how to do a tiling kwin script so that this is done automatically i've done it before and for this display which i use to screen record and then post to youtube uh i'll have this one be tiling while the the one that's part of my framework laptop over here where my vision is in the middle that'll just be a plain floating window manager so i'll have one that's tiling one that's floating and that's really why i love kde so much you can just rice it to your heart's content i even have a media controller up here with the song i was playing before but uh anyway yeah uh this window right here uh alt f4 shatter i love that effect i love it i love kde so much and before i continue i just i just have to flex here let me do a screen fetch and show you my system there it is for all the world to see this is a framework 13 it had the intel chip that was defective it worked okay but uh, the AMD the Ryzen 7, I believe, it's just a lot better, and I have it in gaming mode, so I can render videos better, and also uh, so I can do Steam and that stuff. All right, so I'm going to shatter the terminal here.
And then I'm going to open Color Paint, which is the KDE Linux equivalent of Microsoft Paint. And then Control V. And then I'm going to zoom out. Uh, yeah, there it is. And then from there, I just got to make a couple of changes. Are you ready for that? Well, three to be exact. Are you ready? Get ready. Uh -huh. Democrats. Democracy. Rule by the people, of the people, and for the people. In the second row. Farm. What's a good color for farm? We're, we're, uh, we have a lot of soybeans, so I think this is a good soybean color. There we go. D, F, and finally, L, for labor, democratic farm and labor. You know what, I want to do one more change, though. Uh... I think there should be a darker blue shade than this. D F L. What if I did it like that? D F L. Nah, I'll I'll stick with this. They're both valid. They're the same to me. And not only that, but you have the red representing iron and, you know, the blood of the worker and the working class and fun, fun, fun. We got the Star of the North there, just like here, but it's a bit more stylized and cool. Like the DFL party. The green for farms and forests. And the sky blue for the sky is the limit in a democratic society where people listen to one another and build the best society possible together rather than actively doing everything to rip it apart. to protect their parents' money. I'm not about that life at all. And that is not American behavior. So here it is. That is the DFL party flag. I am going to save this. as a PNG control enter it's done it's kind of a similar setup to Taiwan in the Kuomintang like the Taiwanese flag is derived from the Kuomintang party, but everyone accepts that it's the Taiwanese flag, even 
the Democratic People's Party, the DPP, the one that's challenging Beijing. I'm just going to, you know, I'm just going to take this and smooth scale it up to monitor size here. All right, and I am going to go and to image, and then I'm going to add the image and documents. Uh huh, uh huh, there we go. Open. Here. And scaled and why? All right. There we go. There it is. I have made the DFL party flag with the colors of D, F, and L. In that order, on the right side. Thank you to everyone who was brave enough to watch this video all the way to the very end. And as always, Subscribe if you like, and share if you care.